All right, so here we are back in IIS 7, and all, all that I'm going to show you here works exactly the same in IIS 6. I just happen to be using IIS 7. Um, I've got a new application called Roles Demo. It's based on our previous forms authentication uh, sample. I've added a few more pages. I've added a master page with a, um, a menu control so that we can have some different pages. I've got a doctors only page. Um, and if we take a look at the web.config for this new app, you'll see that I've got still forms authentication here. I don't let any anonymous users in. And for the particular file doctorsonly.aspx, I have an authorization section that only allows users in the role of doctor to use that. Everybody else is denied. Now, the way I've decided to set my roles up, because this is forms authentication, and you know there is no, there are no Windows accounts or Windows groups or you know there's no default place to find roles um, when you're doing forms authentication. Uh, I've created a little XML file that simply maps users onto roles. So here's Alice. Alice is a member of the doctor role. Bob is the member of the doctor role. Keith is a member of the nurse role. So we've got um, this little file here, and I've got some code that I'll show you in a little bit that wires all this stuff up. But before I show you the code, let me show you how it works. Let me just show you the, the, um, the features. So let's browse to the default page. And as you call, recall from our previous application, we have to authenticate. So if we remember who's in what role, Alice is in the doctor role, so let's go ahead and log in as Alice. I use the same technique, Alice, type in her name for the password, and here we are at our home page. It looks a little different. I'm, I made a note here, this page can be viewed by any authenticated user, so Keith and Alice and Bob, anybody can view this page. Um, I've also listed the roles that she's a member of. Um, I'll show you how all this works in a little bit. Um, but notice that I've got a little menu control up here that allows me to go to the doctor's page. Right, so if I go to the doctor's page, I'm a member of the doctor role so I can see it. Now if I was to log out and log back in as Keith, who's a nurse, Keith's not a doctor, I log in, I can see the home page, great. Notice I'm in the role of nurse, I'm not in the role of doctor. And if I try to surf to the doctor's page, I'm going to get um, an unauthorized failure, which is going to redirect me to the login page. That's just the way forms auth works. Okay, so in order to set all of this up and make this work, um, what we need to do is we need to basically replace the principle that forms authentication is giving us. Forms authentication doesn't know anything about roles. It only knows about how to get you an identity for the user. And what your job is, is to uh, write a little bit of code that comes right after forms authentication fires and uh, set those roles up. And it's actually really quite easy to do. So I've created a global.asax file and I've set up a, an associated code file behind that so that I can wire up for the authenticate request event. The authenticate request event, that's the event that forms authentication wires up to in order to uh, rip apart the cookie and um, give you uh, a user identity. Right? So we're going to wire up to that and global.asax will fire after all of the modules run. So our, we'll get a chance to run our code in this event handler here. This will run after forms authentication has already done its work and that's a very important thing. So we check to see if the request is authenticated because we only care about roles for authenticated users and then we call setup roles. Setup roles does four interesting things. It first looks up into the context and it grabs the user's identity that was constructed by the forms authentication module. So that's already taken care of. We don't need to create one of those. We're good. We're going to hold on to that. Then what we're going to do is look at the name of that user, the name that was authenticated, and we're going to go and look up roles. And I have a little bit of code down below here. I'm not going to focus on it, but it basically just used some XPath expressions to parse this file and read the roles and construct an array. So it returns an array of the roles the user is a member of. You're welcome to look at that if you want to on your own. Um, it's part of the sample code. So once we get those roles, we then create a new instance of something called generic principle. Generic principle is a trivial implementation of iPrincipal. 
Remember what iPrincipal is. It has two things. It has an identity that you can get, and we've already got that. We got that from what Forms Authentication gave to us. And it has a set of roles that it exposes when you call is in role. Okay. So once we've got that principle, we then, this is key, we replace the user object in the context, in the HTTP context, we replace it with the principle that we've created that has the forms identity and the roles associated with it. We set that up in the context so that all of the pages from now on and all of the handlers and the rest of the pipeline from now on will see my principle and my set of roles. And this is really important because if you remember back in web.config, we are expecting URL, the URL authorization module to be able to see the roles that we have set up. And so by setting that up in the context, that ensures that um, when, uh, when URL authorization module calls is in role and checks to see if you're a doctor, it will see that Alice is indeed a doctor because we've set up the roles for her. Now I have a fifth thing that I do here that you don't really need to do. I, I, only, I just throw the roles array into, um, into the context just so that I can print them out. Uh, if you remember on a login page when I log in, I'm showing, whoop, Keith, and let me go to the default page. If you remember, I'm printing out the roles here. It, it turns out that um, that generic principle doesn't have any way to enumerate the roles. You can only check the roles by calling is in role which makes it kind of hard to figure out what the, what the set of roles is for diagnostic purposes. So I'm just st storing those off in a little array that I can read from the default page. So to summarize, what we're doing here is we're wiring up into the pipeline so that we can manually set up roles the way we want to. And you don't have to use an XML file, you could use a database. And in the next module you'll learn about how to set this up. There's, there are some role providers that you can use um, that will use uh, things like SQL Server and stuff like that. So you don't have to do this manually. You, you could get some help uh, from ASP.NET on this. Now one other thing I want to point out, and this pr if we just go back to the notion of authorization again, you'll notice that the first thing that I did with this application is I, is I made sure that only appropriate users have access to appropriate pages. And you'll also notice that if you go to, um, I'm logged in as uh, Keith right now. Keith is a nurse. Keith does not have access to the doctor's page. And if he tries to go to the doctor's page, it fails, right? So it's kind of odd that, that the menu item here is showing me a page that I, if I try to go to, I'll sim simply be denied access to. I'm going to show you how to trim this. Uh, these sitemap providers so that they only show pages that you can actually get to. I'll show that to you in a, in, in a little while.